I'm gonna be honest. When I finished recording that last uh, recasting video, it was it was two in the morning, and uh, when that leak sprung, when the box literally started falling apart, <laughs> I was at th I was already done at that point. I was like, oh, okay, this is this is most likely gonna end up being disastrous. So I did everything I could. Uh, to seal the box up, so placed a couple of uh, older molds on top of it to weigh it down, try to make sure that there's nothing leaking from the bottom. Uh, I tried to pour a ton of hot glue on it, try to keep it together, so I don't know if it actually made it through the night. Uh, I didn't even bother to go down to check. It was going to be four to six hours until the silicone solidified, so as far as I know, the damn thing might have just fallen apart after I left, and we're gonna find a giant elephant's foot in there. Let's find out. Okay, so... I'm just gonna turn on the light. Uh... Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. Oh boy. Uh, it doesn't, hold on a second, it doesn't look like a lot has leaked out, let's see, oh, okay, I'm gonna set you up right over there, and, oh my god, no way. No freaking way. We actually salvaged it. I'm not gonna lie, I expected the worst case scenario, but this is actually quite manageable. We have actually been able to save the mold. Seems like we left the mold right as the silicone started solidifying and becoming too viscous to get through the cracks. We really only have like a handful of silicone to uh, deal with on either side. And the best part of course is that silicone can be cut up and used as filler for further pours. We still gotta make up for the silicone that we've lost, but that's the least of our problems at this point. You can see that we can spot our reinforcement kind of peeking through the top. So that's gonna be covered with an additional very small layer of silicone, but other than that, I think it actually came out quite well. This time around, I'm going to use a smaller container for a smaller portion. I'm kind of eyeballing the amount based on how much we've used and uh, how much of a gap we have to close up. This is all really just an estimation. Scrape the bottom. We don't want any excess unmixed part A there. Scrape the walls. Scrape the corners. Alright, that looks pretty decent. like uh, the inside of this piece is contaminated with paper towels so we're gonna we're gonna stay safe and discard this piece and you know what it does look like we have made well I have made you had nothing to do with it a little bit too much silicone have overestimated the volume so we're gonna go ahead and maybe put together a quick little mold for the base of the unit. 
Since this was kind of an unplanned endeavor, I figured I was just going to go for a simple two-part mold, which means I had to quickly scramble and figure out how to get registration markers in place. I thankfully had a bunch of plasticine lying around in a drawer nearby, so quickly grabbed that, chopped off a couple of bits, and put together some very very loosely coupled together registration markers. These registration marks will help align the two halves together. When it comes to the really small drone bases, the one that come in transparent acrylic, there's actually a completely different process to making of the mold. It's actually very easy to set up and I can set it up in such a way that I can produce 20 or 30 of these drone bases in one single motion. It's really cool. I'll have it in another video. The broadside base I would consider to be a medium sized base. It's still pretty much possible to recast it using the two part mold method. However, a base for something like a Storm Surge or Dune Crawler or any larger models are actually way too big to recast with just the regular wobbly silicone halves. The base is simply too large to use silicone alone. That is actually where some sort of reinforcement would be a perfect ideal suit to make sure that your bases don't come out warped or the walls end up too thin. Since we are working with Moldmax 29 NV, the silicone actually gives us about 30 to 45 minutes of work time since it's been mixed, so we actually have a fairly decent amount of time to make these additional molds and cut everything to size. But it's always a good idea you have a backup mold just in case you overestimate, so you can just immediately pour that and not risk the silicone becoming too viscous to be poured. Usually minute objects like bases are a great pick for quick emergency additional molds because they're very simple and, well, you can never have enough bases, eh? All right, and here we are. It was a little sketchy at some point, a little bit improvised, but uh, yeah, we got very two very small molds for the very small parts, so we'll see how that turns out. Now, the next step would be to build the mold for the other sprue. Now, I've already experimented with this before, which is why this already has a whole bunch of air vents set up on all the parts. As a matter of fact, this was the sprue that I had mounted upside down and which basically nullified all the air vents as they were pointing down to the ground. So, you know what? Saves us some time. We can simply do a quick inspection to see if any air vents need to be replaced or reinforced and uh, we can get the second mold done. Now, here's the deal. I want to do the second mold in the same way I've done the first mold with inner reinforcements. But 
as far as you guys are concerned, this is only the second video that I've done on recasting, or technically the third. And I honestly wouldn't blame you if you're wondering, do we really have to make DIY ice cream stick walls reinforcement and shove those into our molds as we did in the last video? Because realistically, what are those ice cream sticks even doing? They are providing rigidity to the molds to equalize the pressure from the clamps when we, well, clamp the two halves together and pull in the liquid silicone. Can't we achieve the same exact result by just using two planks of wood and thus make the mold smaller and make the mold use up a lot less silicone and not have to bother with the whole ice cream stick nonsense? You see, believe it or not, I am actually asking myself all the same questions. Was all that nonsense really necessary? Even though I have done a lot of experiments with these molds, I never really thought of creating my own air vents before I create the mold. Prior to this, I would usually just take a knife and uh, cut additional air vents whatever I saw the bubbles ended up forming. All I've done was make a pour, take out the plastic, see where the bubbles have formed and just go to those places with a knife and add additional vents manually. But this was done after the mold has already been made. I have not yet tested what happens when I place the molds first, skip the ice cream sticks and just make the mold that way. So I figured why not take this opportunity, since I'm already making a mold, to make one like that. No ice cream sticks, just the extra air vents. How about we'll see where that gets us. We're gonna have to clean this mold up a bit because, as I mentioned in the last video, when I was making a silicone pour of this particular sprue, I didn't use the mold release spray. The first time around I made the mold, it was fine. It didn't seem like the silicone actually stuck to the plastic. So I figured, okay, well, maybe we don't need release spray for this. And that was a major mistake because the second time around the silicone, oh yeah, it definitely stuck. So now I gotta pay for my negligence and clean this stuff up manually. We technically don't care about any silicone on the sprue. We just want to clean up the miniature pieces themselves. Most of the vents seem to be still intact from my previous experiment with this sprue, but to be honest, I feel like a lot of them are a little bit too thick. Perhaps if I can maybe cut off the tip as long as there isn't a heating element physically inside of the tip and expand the channel through which the hot glue flows and then tap a thread onto it so I can screw in 3D printing tips. I think that might uh, make for a much more suitable tool. So we once again come up against the crucial juncture, the one that I messed up all so many times. We have air vents that are supposed to let the air rise and escape the mold. We're going to be mounting it like this because once we actually super glue it, pour the silicone, demold it, the vents would have to be pointing upwards. Perfect, okay. This hobby is too damn expensive for me to make the same mistake five times. I'm also gonna try a slightly different approach. I'm gonna lay down the baseline of where the mold is gonna be, then place a couple of very generous thick blobs and pluck the mold like that. Yep. 
you know, a part of me actually hopes that I will prove myself wrong and I don't need all the nonsense with the ice cream sticks or the inner reinforcement and the outside reinforcement will do just fine. Another awkward moment in the last attempt is that I had prepared the mold box pieces in this modular, easy to assemble way, but the way I had put it together was actually nothing but. I totally forgot to take advantage of the whole modular behavior of these panels and kind of glued them hastily in a, well, kind of a willy-nilly way, which is probably what contributed to the whole thing falling apart later on. Okay, so now that we have the mold box done, we're gonna see if we can learn from our past mistakes and this time, use clamps. All right, we got 598 grams, so we're gonna need 59.8 of part B. 57.9 will do just fine, considering we went over last time. I think I don't see any white spots, so I am gonna say this is pretty reasonably mixed up. Okay, so far I'm not seeing any obvious issues with the mold. We're definitely gonna need a little bit more silicone, but definitely not two and a half times as the last mold required. So by the looks of it, we're at about half, actually a little bit over half uh, in the mold, which means we're probably gonna need 400 grams. Let's try, let's try 375 and see where that gets us. In this particular case, it's actually better that we don't quite reach the mark and mix a little bit extra than well, go over and then hastily figuring out what else we can make a mold of so we don't waste the silicone. You know what? I'm going to take a, take a more conservative portion this time around. I'm going to say maybe around maybe 275 even. All right, we got 275.2, so 27.5 of the B solution. Okay, close enough. All right, well, the good news is that we have fully submerged the sprue. We didn't quite reach the top, but you know what? 
I reckon we might have more than enough space there for the little flap that's going to keep the two halves together. And this time around, the whole process took us only two hours, so not bad. I'm going to go ahead and step away for the next four to six hours until this thing cures, and then we'll finally have a chance to demold the stuff and see how it all went. All right, let's pop these bad boys open. I would honestly absolutely love to be able to peel the stuff off in a way that I can reuse it for the future molds, but thankfully the stuff is pretty cheap. Silicone is actually such a fantastic mimicking material that it has gone as far as mimicking the finish of the label that was on the project foam we used. This is actually something you can use to your advantage. Like for example, if you're trying to make a mold of something that's supposed to have a mirror finish, you can actually use acrylic or highly polished metal to get that highly reflective finish. Now that we finally come face to face with the mold, I gotta say I could have used way less silicone. I could have taken the walls and adjusted them a bit closer to one another, made the mold box a little bit thinner. There's really no need for us to use this much silicone. It is something I can pay attention to a lot closer next time around. Now that the mold is finally free of its confines, we can finally start pulling it apart. This style of mold is referred to as the cut mold. As the name might imply, we use a sharp project knife in order to cut the mold in half. Because this is the silicone made specifically for mold making, it offers an exceptionally high tear strength, meaning that the silicone is able to stretch quite far without tearing. We take advantage of this effect. This is generally a very slow and meticulous process as we have to be mindful of where we place our cuts, not that we really have a lot of say. Since we're kind of flying blind here and we're really trying to place the cuts in places where it's not going to create a too obvious of a seam and also we're not going to end up with accidentally burying one of the parts still in the mold. Since every mold is different, it's really up to your experience to try to play around maybe with making smaller cut molds, maybe for some really small sprues or some small kits. As far as I know, there isn't really a general rule set. Every single mold is different, so it's a decent idea to take it slow and be mindful of the surrounding sprue where you're cutting, and eventually this is just going to become second nature. It is, however, worth noting that this particular mold does have the ice cream stick reinforcements inside of its walls, which is actually making cutting this mold extra difficult. Seriously, y'all better have some strong ass muscles in those fingers, because this shit's gonna take a while. I think I did it again. I think I mounted the sprue upside down. 
because all the vents are pointing downwards. How? How? With all the attention I was trying to bring to that point, with all the video commentary I made on orienting the sprue correctly, how did I still manage to mess it up? Yep, I mounted it upside down. I'm still gonna try recasting a unit using this mold, but I doubt we're gonna get good results considering the vents was probably the primary reason why I got such a quality boost. And since the vents are upside down, well, there goes the whole benefit. I'm gonna go ahead and apply a coat of mold release and let that dry while we demold the other sprue. Now since the other mold is not reinforced with additional nonsense inside, this one is actually gonna be a lot easier to demold. At this point, when I started separating the silicone from the sprue, I realized that it has once again bonded to the plastic sprue, even though I have applied silicone mold release spray. Now, it may be that I didn't apply enough, or it may just be that I should have used a brush to make sure that the silicone mold release is actually nice and evenly applied across the entire plastic, so we're gonna have to check it up to one of those learning experience examples. This is, I believe, the third time I have recast this particular sprue, and next time around I'm just gonna have to thoroughly lubricate it with mold release and use a small brush to make sure the agent actually reaches all the nooks and crannies to avoid the silicone bonding to plastic in the future. Thankfully, the silicone only bonded in a select couple of places that seem to already had silicone bond in that place before. So perhaps this is just a case of silicone bonding to already present silicone from the past defect. Nevertheless, won't stop me. Let's keep going.
this large chunk of bonded silicone was honestly pretty disappointing to see. And this is pretty much due to the fact that I've already used this particular sprue to create another mold test and I never used the mold release spray knowing that in the past I have managed to create silicone molds without the silicone bonding to the plastic. But clearly that seems not to be the case. Uh, after the second, maybe third time, it seems like whatever oily residues that acted as mold release would wear off and the plastic would be open to the silicone to just freely bond to it. And as you can see, it does ruin or at least impose a whole bunch of additional cleanup on the original parts, you know, the good ones. So, so perhaps this is just not compatible with smooth on branded silicones. So at this point, while I was watching the liquid plastic solidify, I actually got a bit of a concern that the reaction wasn't happening as fast as I expected. Usually the container or the cup within which you mix the two parts together actually starts getting hot, indicating that the reaction started taking place. And in my case, I didn't feel the cup getting hot. This to me was a serious cause for concern because basically this means that I've just poured non-reactive liquid plastic into this mold and I pretty much have ruined it. Thankfully, even though it took a little bit longer, I did see the liquid plastic turning white, so that means there was still a reaction happening. Now, as far as I know, this might be because my batch of liquid plastic is starting to expire. This actually happens to coincide with the release of my previous recasting video, which happened in 2021 at the end of June when I was making the video for recasting the Dune Crawler. It was around the making of that video when I purchased that batch of plastic and it appears that it's about to expire. Thankfully, over the course of the year, I did use most of it, so if these molds turn out okay, I might as well splurge on some broadsides and who knows, maybe I'll have some left to make a video on recasting a piranha. Since one of the most prominent issues when creating recasts is the uneven distribution of liquid plastic within the mold, I am trying to use the clamps very lightly and very sparingly. I'm not trying to over tighten them because that will create parts that are too thin and I am likewise not trying to use the clamps too loosely because that will create too much space between the mold halves and will end up with super thick plastic film which is just going to be not worth trying to deal with. Alrighty then. Well, it has taken us a little while, but uh, we can finally take a look at the results of our labor. Okay, so this is the mold that had correct vent orientation, and this was the one that didn't have any inner reinforcements. So, well, let's take a look at what we get. Right. Okay. Okay, 
so. By the looks of it, we do have a missing part right there. It didn't have enough vents, so we can always take a knife. We can add additional vents and passages to allow extra air to escape. Taking a look at the parts themselves, there's actually very little film. So this is no internal reinforcements. We do see a couple of sketchy areas. Out of the obvious stuff, you can see that, uh, well, this part is just missing entirely. This was supposed to have been this device right here, the shield generator. You can see this part pretty much didn't cast whatsoever. We got some holes right here. Got some bubbles being trapped right there. To be honest, these guys aren't as egregious. I, I can live with these. I can paint around these as bullet holes. I can fill them up with potty or clay or plasticine. So not a huge deal, to be honest. A couple of holes here and there I can totally live with, but the, the missing parts are usually the worst ones. A part of me thinks is that maybe I just have old liquid plastic. After all, I did buy this jug in 2021, so it has been, ooh, it has been enough time, I think, for this stuff to start going bad. Um, looks like I'm gonna have to restock with some new stuff. I am almost convinced that if I have a new stock of liquid plastic, I can make this a lot better. Same mold, same exact pour. It just needs to flow a little bit better. Heck, I might even try to pour it again with the same stuff, just to see if I can get a better result second time around. This part here just kind of came off, so it is here. You can see a couple of holes, you know. Nothing that a little bit of potty can't fix. Of course, these aren't going to be perfect results. As you can see, we do have some bubbles that got formed. It really depends on what your quality bar is. I tend to not play 40k in tournaments or any official games. To be honest, most of the time I just play with my buddy. And that is more than enough for me. I do like painting and assembling these um, just as much, and even if it's a recast, the panning and assembly doesn't really change. So, I can still have fun with this. Here's that pool of uh, liquid plastic I was telling you about. When you mount the sprue to the project foam at the bottom, these blobs of hot glue essentially turn into your liquid plastic pools. There's a small section of the foot that's kind of, uh, well, it's, it's almost there. It's not really... This part of the foot that didn't really cast all that well. This part of the foot is missing entirely. There's a whole array of parts at the bottom here that are effectively just non-existent. This stuff is just missing altogether. Now, what's interesting is that with this foot, even though it's missing, it's got this big fat bubble in here, there is an air vent over here so maybe the air got trapped right at the top. So maybe the air vent should have gone up and then to the side rather than from the side. But who knows? You know, we will really find out if it's such a huge problem when we do a second pour. Just to find how repeatable these results are and see if the parts that are missing here are also going to be missing in the second pour. Giant bubble of destruction right there. Surprisingly enough, the rest of the parts, all the bigger parts, have uh, recast pretty gosh darn well, I would say. Sure, a couple of minor bubbles here and there. Can't even see the majority of defects at kind of surface level right here. Doesn't seem like any of the parts are missing, except for perhaps that little piece right there. It's also worth noting that the liquid plastic I used here is the 15 minute cure time plastic. So realistically, if we use the 30 minute plastic, 30 minute cure time, I think we're actually gonna get much better results because the liquid plastic has more time in its liquid state to seep into all the crevices and all the corners and fill up all the gaps 
before it starts solidifying. I just personally like the 50 minute cure plastic because, well, it allows for very rapid iteration and it makes me want to design a mold that is actually usable with 15 minute plastic. But, you know, sometimes you just gotta wait an extra 15 minutes. All right, let's see what the other mold looks like. That's the mold that I fucked up on. I put all the vents upside down again. <sighs> This one's a lot harder to get the stuff out of. This particular case was very strange to me because it didn't seem like the silicone had bonded to the liquid plastic. I mean, I definitely used enough mold release there. I think it might be the fact that the inner wall reinforcements don't allow me to bend or twist the mold, which means that there's a fair amount of vacuum behind the parts as you're trying to pull them up. And that's why it takes extra effort to pull these parts out. Weirdly enough, it wasn't this difficult to pull out the parts for the last mold with inner reinforcements I made, so who knows. And the good news is that even though it was extra challenging to pull all the recast parts out of this mold, they actually did come out quite well. All the fine detail was captured just fine and there were little to no bubbles whatsoever. At this point, I don't know if this is due to the fact that this is a reinforced mold and it allowed us to equalize the pressure from the clamps, or if this improvement in quality is solely due to the fact that we added additional air vents to the mold. It is kind of hard to come to a conclusion because this was the mold which I have mounted upside down by mistake. And on top of that, you have seen the results for the non-reinforced molds and vast majority of that sprue came out looking just fine as well. So with this particular mold, I honestly would have been surprised to see even a part of it being recast. All right, so yeah, as you can see, the results for the mold whose vents are upside down, not correctly placed, basically nullifying all of that work and all of that silicone. You can see the results are, well, less than ideal. Now, to be fair, the parts that didn't get bubbles are recast perfectly. I'm talking about, for example, this part of the weapon. This is just perfect. Like I can see some bubbles underneath the surface. Sure, you can see some bubbles underneath the surface, but you know what? After you prime and paint, you're not gonna see that. That's gonna look perfect. These parts, even though they have detached when I was taking the pieces out, you can still glue these together and the repair for this sort of damage will look no worse than something like repairing a mini for accidentally dropping it off the table. As long as the majority of the part is actually intact, we can definitely salvage it. Sure, something like this looks a little worse for wear, and of course you can't really recover parts that haven't been cast entirely, but I am almost positive that if I haven't screwed up the orientation of the sprue, this would have come out almost as perfect as the other one. 
I mean, honestly, look at where the bubbles have formed. Here's the top of the sprue. This is where our hot glue is holding it together, which means that becomes the top of the mold once we demold and start pouring the liquid plastic. We have a giant bubble right here, a giant bubble right here. And if you take a look at the corresponding place on our sprue, you can see there's the pocket of air. There's another one. Had I mounted this correctly, this vent would have been the one pointing up and that bubble could have escaped quite easily. You can see how another bubble formed right here and right here. And of course, on the sprue, here's that spot right here, here's that spot right there. So of course a bubble would have formed right there, but had I mounted it correctly, those bubbles would have had a vent, the one that we placed ourselves, to go up. I think this one might have been lost in the translation, but you get the idea. Okay, so fair enough. We do have some pieces that we can build a miniature out of, but what if we try to correct for the mistakes by adding additional vents into the sprue manually with a knife, making another pour and see how that goes? I mean, sure, it's not gonna be as pretty as if we were to come out right, right away, but at the same time, I'll take a slightly funky looking piece than no piece at all. With these four pieces, even though our extra vents were pointing downwards, these pieces do have their own vents that were pointing up, and it seems like they actually survived quite well without even using our additional vents. Of course, my ideal goal would be to get a mold that doesn't require any additional vents. Well, that's actually where the idea of placing additional vents with hot glue came from. And I swear, it does work. You saw the first mold. The one that didn't use any of that nonsense with reinforcements inside of the mold. The good old standard cut mold actually worked better than this crap. And I'll be honest, I was fully convinced that it's the inner reinforcements that actually made it better. It didn't. It was simply the extra vents. I'm telling you, man, every recast attempt, I find something new. Let's see if we can find these two pieces. Okay. Part of me is really tempted to use the 30 minute liquid plastic, but if this mold now actually does a lot better than the last attempt, I won't know if it's because of the additional vents or if it's because of the 30 minute plastic. So we're gonna still use the 15 minute stuff and see if the quality improves. And then we're gonna see about maybe trying out the longer stuff. I'm gonna try to stir it a little bit quicker and see if I can pour it into the mold sooner so that the liquid plastic has more time to seep into all the crevices. Oh, well, that's not good. And this is exactly why I have a goofy loincloth made out of old bed sheets. Mm. 
beside here, folks. I didn't use enough clamps on the sides and the liquid plastic leaked out. So, learn from my mistakes. I'm not gonna lie, the sheer amount of mistakes I've made in the last two or three videos let me tell you, it's a real morale tester. <laughs> Sometimes I just want to say... Fuck it! <laughs> yeah. Oh well. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna end this video once we take a look at what's inside this. I'm not gonna make the other mold with the 30 minute stuff. We're gonna save that for another video. What I'm hoping here is that here, we're gonna get all the pieces that we lost in the other attempt. Oh yeah, and we still have all the uh, molds for the bases and uh, drone rods that we haven't busted open. But uh, you know what? I think it's been enough for one episode. I do hope that out of all these experiments, I find some sort of a method that actually delivers reasonable results with a relatively low failure rate. Who knows, maybe one of you guys can pick up the stuff that I've learned and uh, get rid of all the nonsense and add in your own stuff and together we can produce a method that produces worthwhile results. I gotta say, the best results I have ever gotten were when I would take a single sprue and I would cut it up into maybe four or eight sections and I would just make multiple small molds of each individual section because first of all the failure rate for the recasts in that case is actually a lot more tolerable because if you fail a recast on the entire sprue well then it depends on how it goes to be honest i mean in the last attempt one sprue came out horrendous and the, the other one actually had only maybe a couple of missing pieces but here's the thing if you need to then do a cast again just to make up for the lost pieces well guess what now you have to remake the entire sprue just for those few pieces so and if you have the whole sprue you might as well just build the whole unit out of it right so instead what i had done is i had split up the sprue into individual components into like into four or eight slices and just made individual molds for all those and the results actually do turn out quite well the only downside is that it just takes extra time it honestly would be nice if we could perfect a method that gets you great results from one single sprue right away. Alright, it looks a little too malleable still. I don't like these giant gaping holes. And still, for something that I believe to be nearly expired liquid plastic, this stuff seems to be hardened quite well. <sighs> it is one in the morning. It's almost two in the morning and I'm really tempted to end this video and just come back tomorrow. But I don't want this video to be too damn long. And it's already way too long. Like I tend to unnecessarily over edit the shit out of these. I look at the equivalent videos, they're about 10, 15 minutes long. And then this asshole comes around, you know, 40 minute part one, 15 minute or whatever part two. It's gotta be bite-sized, bite-sized entertainment. Come on, you bastard. Nah, nah. <laughs> I think that's enough. I would like to point out that this is still the same mold that you saw me struggle for so long to pick out each and every individual piece that got stuck inside. Now everything comes out like butter. Oh yeah, okay. All right, so even provided the disaster is poor, we actually did at least reclaim a couple of bits and pieces. Also, this time around, it's a heck of a lot easier to pull out of the mold. 
so I believe I simply didn't use enough mold release last time around. Come to think of it, perhaps it wasn't that I didn't use enough, but it's that I didn't use it correctly. It's usually a good idea to not just spray the mold release, but also use a brush to get it into all the nooks and crannies where the mold release is needed the most. All right, we got this piece back. We got this piece back. These two guns actually ended up casting quite well. Still a little bit flexible. I think I pulled it out a little bit too soon, but I'm impatient. This is intact. This is intact. This recast perfectly. This one did too. There's usually a problem with the holes. Uh, these deep holes where you put in the rod that attaches the drone to the base. These always don't get cast very well. You just got to use some glue on them or a Dremel tool. This piece is actually attached. I mean, it was cast all right. It just kind of fell out of the hole. These pieces are actually present. They were entirely missing from here. These three pieces were also entirely missing. And all we did is just attach three small vents with a knife. The biggest improvement, I would say the fact that the drones don't have that giant gangrenous tumor in the middle of them. These rockets are always a bitch and a half. As a matter of fact, this entire pour gets sketchier the further we go up. So. Yeah, the liquid plastic leaking out didn't really help. And of course, us collecting it, putting it back in didn't really do much. This little piece didn't really improve at all. But then again, it's closer to the top bit. So it's kind of makes sense. This entire top piece is a write off. But hey, that's where the other piece comes in. So I think we can actually build this thing now, but not in this video. It's two in the morning and I'm falling asleep over here. OK, so all in all, I would say that between the three pours we've performed today, we can actually build a miniature. And yes, it was a fun time. There were happy times. There were sad times. There were sketchy times. But all in all, I would say this was a fun experience. I do still want to see what happens when we use the 30 minute liquid plastic rather than 15 minute stuff. So I think there might actually be a part three where we assemble this stuff, use the 30 minute stuff, see what the difference is like. Maybe we take care of the base molds and see how we recast those. If you have any suggestions, post them in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.